Well, we haven't seen the end of free speech and free speech censorship across social media platforms. And uh, someone who is a free speech purist is Elon Musk. And two weeks ago, he sent out a fairly interesting tweet, which caught our attention. And he said, this was on March 25th, free speech is essential to a functioning democracy. Do you believe Twitter rigorously adheres to this principle? I want to know who the 30% that said yes, <laughs> by the way. They all work for Twitter. Yeah, they yeah, must all work for It's Are like you, it's all of Silicon Valley. <laughs> this is literally the platform that shut tr- Trump down or you know, shut down Marjorie Taylor Greene, shut down... Look, blocked me. You know, I posted I posted stuff that blocked and 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 told, you know, told my followers that it was from an un, unreliable source. It's like, who are you? Who are you, by the way, Twitter, the arbiter of truth? Anyway, then Elon says the consequences of this poll will be important. Please vote carefully. So two million people voted. So that's not just a small sample size. Two million people, 30 percent have said that they believed Twitter rig- rigorously adheres to this principle. Which and is- they are 100 percent Twitter users. <laughs> Because he had to be on Twitter to vote. So we know he got the right demographic. Well, we learned this morning that Elon Musk uh, has decided to buy a huge uh, percentage of Twitter. He is now a huge stakeholder in Twitter, 9.2%. Uh, I read that he's the biggest now. Is that true? I, like I, think he, I think he is the biggest. I'm not sure how the shares are divided up, but that puts him at the top of the list. And so instead of, because there was a lot of rumors that, oh my gosh, Elon Musk is going to start his own social media platform. Yes. Right. He's going to start his own Trump style truth social. And that, you know, that's kind of always the thinking, right? That's kind of the the normal thing. Well, fine. I'm just going to go over there. I'm going to take my ball and I'm going to go play over there. That's how I think we all think, right? Oh, YouTube's going to block us like they blocked our show. We're just going to go over to Rumble. We're going to go to right, other places. Right, but that feeds into the myth of the digital democracy. There is not actually a digital democracy where I have the, f- the same freedom to start a new platform online as, say, someone who was born with no shoes in South America, right? Absolutely, it takes privilege to start a platform and gain followers and users, but we pretend that the internet is democratized. It's not. Well, he might have learned something from what happened to Exxon. So remember when Exxon's board, um, Engine One, managed to basically become a part of Exxon's board members. Three of them became a part of Exxon's board, Engine One. Their whole, yes. their whole idea was, look, we're not going to beat them by like creating our own oil company. What we need to do is come together as activists and get on their board to influence their decisions. Yes. And I think that probably is the most brilliant thing he could have done here. Like yeah. It's, it's an original idea, really. Like we just said, Engine One did it at Exxon, right? We also yeah. saw it happened at, um, what's the other other big oil company? Where it forced BP, yeah, BP and Exxon, I believe. Chevron, I thought. Chevron, yeah, yeah. Force their hand. Force their hand to basically say, we're gonna start, we're gonna we're gonna get off oil and start to build solar and wind farms. Well, as these platforms are increasingly accused of authoritarianism and people continue to be um, disenchanted with them, this news actually breathed a lot of life into Twitter because people trust Elon Musk to protect our right to say dumb things, our right to say things that are not uh, popular, our right to question things. In fact, just recently when he was diagnosed with COVID, he said it's starting to feel like a mythical thing, right? Right. He was allowed to say that. He did not get blocked for it. Uh, Now we know why. In fact, at the time I was like, why do they let him say this, Uh, that I have COVID and it feels mythical? Um, now we know absolutely why. So it's interesting. It's not a if you it's a it's a if you can't beat them, join them um, kind of way rather than like, hey, come over here to my own social network, which, you know, that's always a problematic way to fight. Um, it's and it's also interesting because Twitter costs him a lot of money. He's been fined heavily by the Securities and Exchange Commission for things that he puts on Twitter which the Securities and Exchange Commission then accuses him of influencing his company price through Tesla. Um, So it will be interesting to see, one, if this makes him money, two, if it changes the platform, and three, if it makes the SEC go after him even more so because now um, he is making it increasingly a place that the government will not be able to control. Dave Rubin writes, 
uh, this fantastic news coming out of Twitter. Jay Mulholland says, my name is Jackson Mulholland and I'm many of people here working at Twitter in charge of developing terms and conditions for users. We're not stripping away free speech. We're protecting users from bullies, bigots, and spam. I refuse to work with or for Elon Musk. I'm resigning. Goodbye. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> you, know, you know, did you know that Coinbase did this recently? That Coinbase just said, we are not ever going to be subject to woke politics. We are not a place that is going to start um, putting any social pressure on anybody for anything. If you are the kind of place and person or user that wants woke politics and to pressure certain things for your outcome, which like, what is that, right? That's saying democracy doesn't work. The way we voted in somebody to represent us hasn't worked. So we want to then uh, put sort of sanctions on a company for not doing what I want. Um, and Coinbase has said, basically, we're never going to do that. If you want that, here is a bonus for you to leave and not work here anymore. And you can go work somewhere else. And then any kind of political action inside of our business will just basically not be tolerated. And in the months since they did that, they have found that people are happier. No, Everyone feels like they can just vote who they want to. They can say what they want to. Imagine that. And it is a place now that exists without any kind of woke capitalism. Um, and I think that that is, if I will, um, the intention of Elon Musk. I, I hope so. I hope, you know, he, he talks about being a free speech purist. Remember, there was the call. I mean, there, there was, I don't know if it was the U.S. government or who it was in the Western media, I forget specifically, who called upon him to shut down, um, what was it, to pull, uh, to, sh to shut down, shut down Starlink um, from like Russian websites. Mm -hmm. Make sure that like no one could, no, oh, right. no Russians could use Starlink. And he his, said no. He's like, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm a free speech purist. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. You're like, you're not going to, I'm not going to give certain people a, um, access to my satellites and others not, not access. Um, and again, I come back to this great book. You should all read it. I, I'm encouraged. It's, I made, I'm saying, Natalie, this is going to be the next book that you read because it's so good. Woke Incorporated, Inside Corporate America's Social, Social Justice Movement. And really talks about how like this this hypocrisy that we somehow need our businesses to be you know to to be activists um, and they're full of crap. I mean they're full of crap and they're so hypocritical. By the way, yes, you know they ignore they ignore atrocities in certain places and you get it because it you know it's inconvenient and they get to make money off of those atrocities. But I then, wonder what did that guy have against working for Elon Musk? Like he says, I I want to. Like what? What's his point? I don't know. I his don't know. point <laughs> is that he's not actually for free speech, I guess, because he feels like free speech equals bullying, spamming, and all that other stuff. Yeah. I mean, he and says course, he says in one breath, "I'm for free speech," but then against bullying and all that other stuff. When when bullying is subjective, I mean, there's a lot of things that people take as bullying that aren't. You know what I mean? So he sees that that as a threat to. Like he just feels like Elon Musk is going to make it a a free for all. Like everybody attack everybody, which already happens on Twitter, by the way. Because he said mean things to Elizabeth Warren, do you think? Or who knows? I, I think it's just that he like he's been labeled right wing. And so if, if anybody that even like sticks their toe into the right wing side, you're against the, the woke mob. Maybe maybe he hadn't been told how to react yet because the main like he hadn't got the official narrative of how to react to this, so he tried to preempt the what the official narrative would be. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, it's amazing because now Elon Musk is the largest, uh, as David pointed out, the largest shareholder, and he eclipses Jack Dorsey. Isn't that amazing? So now Jack Dorsey oh, wow. holds less of a stake in Twitter than does Elon Musk. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I do too. I love it. I love that he's going to stir the pot on this. Uh, and you know, and I think that that's why Silicon Valley came over, and they're like Facebook employees, and everybody like go vote in this poll, TikTok, go vote in this poll. Why? Because he's coming for us next, <laughs> <laughs> right? Beyond two eighty in our chat says that dude is probably the one who banned me on Twitter. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. Like some little woke woke. He's like, oh, I don't like that comment. I don't like that comment. Block, block, ban, ban, ban. 